What's up, everybody? So, I always have heard the story of this guy, Preacher, Preacher's crew, kidnapping Bobby Brown. You know, when Alpo said, when, Al, when Alpo had that interview with Unique, he said, back in the day when the wolves was out, when the, when the wolves was out, I had a feeling he was talking about Preacher and his crew when he said that. But, um, yeah, Bobby Brown, bro. Now, this story don't get talked about too much. I don't even think Bobby Brown mentioned this in his book. Don't get talked about at all, bro. But I Googled this, found out, you know, what really happened. He was kidnapped. I don't know if this was in the movie or not. He, he got a bi biopic. I got to see if it was in that. But, uh. Go ahead and read this, man. It's very interesting right here. Bobby Brown was kidnapped. Wow, that's crazy. By the damn people that I talk about all the time. These damn people in that Harlem circle, bro. Like, this shit deep, bro. Okay, let's go. Whitney Houston. Okay. Troubled diva Whitney Houston secretly... Secretly... Paid a four hundred thousand ransom demand. Four hundred thousand, damn. Paid a four hundred thousand ransom demand to kidnappers who threatened to kill her ex-husband Bobby Brown. A bombshell new book claims Brown was snatched and held naked and hogtied at gunpoint by members of a notorious New York street gang known as the Preacher Crew. According to author David Collins, he was later allowed to make one phone call to Whitney in which he pleaded with her to personally deliver the ransom to an abandoned building in the Bronx. Disguised in a wig and dark glasses, the terrified singer obeyed and handed over a duffel bag containing the cash 24 hours later to 6 feet 7 inches to, to six feet seven inch gang boss Clarence Preacher Healy, says Collins. He claims the kidnapping, which was never re reported to police, happened in April 1993, when Whitney was at the peak of her fame with her film The Bodyguard and his soundtrack album. Both huge hits. Unlike the movie, however, in which Kevin Costner co starred as her heroic. Minder, Whitney was forced to face her then husband's kidnappers alone to hand over the ransom before they were both allowed to walk away free. Scary. Former gang member Collins claims in his autobiography, Preacher of the Streets, that Brown was snatched over a $25,000 debt to a New Jersey drug dealer. Heatley currently serving life without parole after admitting being involved in 13 gang related killings allegedly paid the dealer and took over the debt. Damn. <laughs> That's crazy. Heatley described by Collins as an 18 gang members. What? Heatley described by Collins as an 18 gang members he had a plan to make a whole lot more than 25,000 his henchmen were sent to a Manhattan nightclub where they allegedly plied brown with high grade supply that, that supposed to be supplied it said plied where they allegedly supplied brown with high grade cocaine later luring him to a Bronx apartment with the promise of more. Collins claims Brown was taken to a sleazy abandoned apartment that had been taken over by preacher crew members. There he was knocked out with one punch by one of Heatley's henchmen. When he awoke, Bobby was naked and hogtied, his mouth stuffed with a rag, says Collins. The preacher then 
showed up and took the rag out of Bobby's mouth. It's a shame we have to kill you, Preacher told Bobby. Bobby begged for his life and said Whitney could pay the debt. The preacher left the room and his men then terrorized Bobby for two hours. They didn't have to do all that. They kicked him. They told him they would kill Whitney. One of them put a gun to his head. Bobby was weeping when the preacher came back in the room, begging the preacher to let him call Whitney. That's all they had to do in the first place. This, according to Collins, was the fear tactic Heatley believed would help him score a big financial hit. Okay, I got you. Brown was allowed to phone Whitney telling her he would be killed unless she paid the game. Heatley, according to Collins, then took the phone from Brown. As Whitney pleaded with him, with him to spare her, her, her husband, they came to an agreement. She was personally going to bring 400000 to get her man back. The next day, she did just that. She was wearing a wig. She paid the money, and Bobby was free to go. Well, you got to clap for that. He let him go. Collins writes. Once they were gone, Preacher sat there with the duffel bag of money and split it with his men. Preacher kept over 200000 of it. Collins believes both Brown and Whitney were lucky to escape, shaken but virtually unscathed. Mm. That's true. He could have killed them. He kept the money. They know who he was. They know his face, I believe. In his book, he recounts his own years as a member of the Preacher crew whose income was derived mainly from drug dealing in Harlem and the Bronx and whose trademark was torturing victims who couldn't or wouldn't settle their drug debts. Writes Collins, Members would slice off body parts of rival dealers or defaulters before killing them. The gang was eventually busted by police in a series of raids that landed its key figures in prison. Spokesperson for both Whitney and Brown yesterday refused to discuss the kidnap allegations, but relatives are bound to be horrified by yet another account of the couple's descent into what Whitney's 73-year-old mother, Chrissy, described as a living hell. Bob Brown, 40, and Whitney, 45, were divorced in April 2007 after a torrid 15-year marriage during which she went into a rehab three times. Police were called to their mansion numerous times and child welfare workers threatened to take their daughter Bobby, now 15, into custody. Oh man, you know, Bobby probably would have been better off if child, care, if child welfare workers did take her. At the time of the alleged kidnapping, Whitney was one of the world's leading singers and a fast rising Hollywood A-list star. Blah blah blah. It goes on and on talking about Whitney and a drug past, which is very sad. But uh, man, yeah, they were lucky to to escape to to live because you know they were lucky to live. He took a lot of money, but wow. Goes to show you don't do drugs. And if you do do them, pay your damn debt. You know. I'm surprised this happened to Bobby. You know, Bobby known as the bad boy of R&B, but uh, they don't talk about this. They don't talk about this story too much. Wow. That's it for me, man. The preacher was the boogeyman of, of Harlem. New York, whatever, well, all the Bronx, whatever, wherever he was at, he was the boogeyman. Peace out.